The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Welcome to another episode of Long Live La Familia, our nutrition soap opera series that speaks not only to our heart, but also to our appetite. I'm Carrie Bachman, your host for the series. Now today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of watching an episode that features our Sierra family, we're going to be treated to some preparation of food. In fact, three of the Sierra family's favorite recipes, which are New Mexico entrees we all enjoy. Now the first recipe that we're going to look at is one of Vicky's specialties. From when Vicky and her daughter and niece were trying to figure out how to use the food guide pyramid. They enjoyed that night red enchiladas that Vicky had made from scratch. Now red enchiladas are one of our favorites and that's a good thing too because they're high in calcium, vitamin A and vitamin C. The one thing that we need to keep in mind though is that they also can be very high in fat and calories. What we'll see in the next segment is Lupe, who is demonstrating to us how to make red enchiladas a little bit healthier without sacrificing any of that great flavor. Hello, today I'm going to demonstrate how to make red enchiladas uh, in low fat. First, I'm going to show you the red chili, and uh, we're going to start first by cleaning it, okay? And we want to remove all the seeds of the chili, and then you want to wash this chili real good. I'm going to remove all the seeds, and um, after that, I'm going to put it in, in hot water, which I've already done. Okay, now we're going to put our chili that I had been simmering in our blender. And it's pretty hot and it's already very pliable. And then uh, we're going to add a little bit of the liquid first and we'll continue to add as we go on. And I'm going to add uh, four garlics and about a teaspoon of salt. You can also add cumin or a pinch of oregano to it. I'm going to go ahead and start it and then I'll stop it and um, add more water to it. And we're going to let it blend for a few minutes. I'm going to add a little bit more water. And that should be it. And then you blend it up for about two to three minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil in my pan. I'm going to add about a half teaspoon of oil. So 
our, the chili is already blended and I'm just going to put it through this. Get rid of all the little seeds and the rest of the peeling. Smells so good. It's, it's one of my favorites, red chili. I can have red chili with anything. Uh, okay, I have a my chordine and it's already, I think, kind of warm. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of um, flour. And you don't have to put flour, but I kind of like to put a little bit of flour. You want to brown it also. As you can see, I really never put very much oil. It's just to give it a kind of a little taste. Okay, now I'm going to add the sauce to it. And we're going to let it simmer a little bit, okay? And I'm going to show you a way of making, um, of making your tortillas so that you don't have to put them in oil. This is another way of you eating your enchilada without the extra fat. And there's two ways that you can do it. You can do it in the microwave, and you can just wrap them in, um, in, for, in, a, in the towel, paper towel. So what I do to give them a little more, for them to be a little more flexible, and a little more tastier, I, I just get a little bit of oil in my palm of my hand and I'll just kind of rub it. And then I'll put, it, I'll put that tortilla down and then I'll get another one. And as you can see, it's, there's not hardly any oil. It's just to give it a, a little more of a tastier, I think, or more flexible. It won't be so dry. Okay, so here we are, we've done that. And you can either wrap them in foil, like I'm going to do right now, or you could just wrap them in a, baby, in a paper towel and put them in the microwave for about uh, 49 seconds, and they would be real flexible. Today we're going to just put them here on top of the stove and just kind of let them get warm a little. And also you want to turn it around. Okay. Okay, they're hot already. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Okay, my, the chili is already done. And what you want to do is get your tortillas. It's, they're real nice and warm. You get your plate. You're going to immerse your tortilla. You immerse your tortilla real good. And you just put it in your plate. If you want, you can add a little bit more of chili so it won't be too dry.
and then you want to add a little bit of cheese. And a little bit of onion if you like onion. I just love onion. So I put a lot of onion on my enchiladas. And then again, you go ahead and immerse your tortilla real good. And you put it on top. And put a little bit more cheese. And some onions. And uh, while I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and put my skillet and uh, so it can get start getting warm to, to put the egg on. And I'm going to add just, I think, about a, a maybe even, a, what is it, a, a fourth teaspoon of oil. We don't want to put too much oil. And if you have um, any other thing to put in it, you can put it so it just to, you don't want, you can put butter or just rub it with a paper towel so it just won't stick. And more chili. Like I said, you can add as much as you want. And we're going to add a little bit of cheese. And some onion. Now we're going to put our egg into the enchilada. And we're going to crack the egg first to see that it's not spoiled. And we're just going to put it in. Looks like our egg is getting ready, and I'm just going to turn it around, toss it. OK. You can also decorate your enchiladas with uh, some lettuce, like we're going to do today. Or you could use also some uh, cabbage, if you have some cabbage. We're going to put lettuce and tomato. You could even put some olives, black olives. And it makes a very, uh, very uh, low-cost meal, low in fat, and also very tasty. And it's very, um, very uh, inexpensive. And you can whip an enchilada, especially if you're working, those red enchiladas sure look delicious, and Lupe showed us a variety of ways to make them healthier for us, too. The first thing that she did was had to do with the red chili sauce itself. She made it from scratch, using just a little bit of oil and flour to thicken it. A lot of times, the red chili sauce can have a lot of, of oil, and that makes it higher in calories and fat. The one thing, too, when you make your own enchilada sauce at home, you can make it as spicy or as mild as you'd like. Now the second thing that Lupe did had to do with the corn tortillas. Usually when we eat enchiladas, the tortillas have been fried in fat, and that makes them kind of crispy and they absorb the taste of the, of the chili sauce. But what Lupe did was different. She folded them up into some foil and put them onto the top of the stove to heat up, and then just dipped them into the chili sauce. You can do the same thing yourself at home. Another idea that you might want to try is making a one-dish meal of enchiladas. What you can do is just put the chili sauce into a large saucepan on the stove once it's made. Heat it up and then break your tortillas into thirds and little pieces. You can just put the tortillas and the onions straight into the sauce, let it cook and heat up a little while, 
And then when you're ready to serve, just sprinkle cheese over the top of it, cover for a minute or so, and it'll be nice and melted. And you can just serve out of the one dish. Now the other thing that we saw here was the type of cheese that Lupe used. She only needed to use a little bit of grated cheese on top of each tortilla. Now when she did that, that cut down the amount of fat that was in the recipe. But the other important thing was she used a low-fat, high-flavor cheese. And that way you don't need to use as much cheese, you still get the flavor and the texture, but without all of the fat and calories that come from lots of cheese. Now finally, our enchiladas were topped with a fried egg. And those fried eggs, as you know, can be made either very high in fat with lots of oil, or as Lupe did, in a non-stick skillet with just a tiny bit of oil. So in the end, she had a very healthy dish that was lower in fat and calories, and yet still included a lot of vitamin C, vitamin A from the red chili, and calcium as well from the cheese. Now, we're going to look at, take a look at a second recipe that Irene will be sharing with us. This is for meat stew, or called, also called caldillo. And if you remember, this was something that we saw in the, in the video with Samuel and his family. When they sat down to eat together, this was the main dish in that, in that dinner. Caldillo is a really delicious recipe, and it's something, in fact, that's hardly a recipe at all. It's open to lots of experimentation. So let's take a look and see how Irene prepares caldillo. Hi. Today I'm going to prepare caldillo, Mexican stew. It's very low in fat and very nutritious for you. First, I'm going to start with the meat. Here I have some steak. And as you see, there's some uh, fat around it, and I'm going to cut, cut the fat off. Make sure that when you buy your steak, ladies, that you make sure that it's very lean. I'm going to start uh, cutting the meat in cubes. Then I put it on my hot burner. It's already been preheated. And I put the meat in there. And then I've got the rest of the meat already, already cut up over here. And remember that the, that the fat I'm not going to use. And I'm just going to put it in there. Remember, the fat wants to go in there, but I'm going to let it go because it's not good for you. All right. And let me stir it a little bit. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to um, add a mixture of, of spices. It's the oregano, I've got the uh, garlic in there, and I've got the onion. And I'm going to add it to the meat right now. This gives it the, the flavor that you need. And while I'm doing, put this down over here, and I'm going to stir it. And I'm coming back, and I'm going to add the flour. And I'm going to mix it for oh, about a minute or two. Just let it brown. Okay. Kind of make it like uh, kind of browned. I'm going to add the tomato sauce. Okay, and I'm going to mix it. Hey ladies, don't forget your chili. Here we go. The chili. Stick it in there. Can of chili. And just mix it. Okay. I'm adding that the the other vegetables that I already cut up. And I'm going to stir it and mix it. Okay. Look at, the, look at the colors. Look how beautiful it looks. You've got your carrots that gives it color. You've got your celery that, that, uh, that gives it color. You, it's, it's a beautiful appetizing dish. I think Samuel and his family would have enjoyed Irene's version of caldillo. What did she do that made it a little bit healthier than the way we normally would eat it? 
Well, the first thing she did, she chose a, a cut of meat that was low in fat to begin with, and she had trimmed the visible fat from around the edges. That makes it healthier to start, to start off even before you cook. Then what she did with the meat was brown it in a little bit of oil. Now you might say, why do we need to go to the trouble of browning it? Let's just put it in and use it as like a soup. But actually when you brown meat that way, it adds a lot of flavor and you can in fact use less meat than you would normally use. That stretches your food dollar a little bit further. Now the other thing that Irene did was she added lots of tasty vegetables, onion, potato, and carrots. That adds nutrients and fiber to the caldillo. And you might want to try and experiment yourself. Cabbage is delicious in this recipe, as well as turnips or rutabagas. Very tasty. Let's move now to our third recipe of the day. In this sequence, Bertha will be showing us how to make homemade tortillas into a tasty dish that all of us are familiar with. Now you might remember, Lisa is the expert in the family at making homemade flour tortillas. In fact, in our episode, where they're making a quick meal at home, she cho shows her daughters how to make those homemade tortillas. Bertha will be taking those tortillas and using them to make bean burritos that are smothered in chili sauce. Let's see how she does that. I'm gonna be showing you how to do the flour tortillas and we're gonna use one cup of white flour and one cup of whole wheat flour, which will make these flours more nutritious. And we're gonna add a teaspoon of baking powder a teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of dry milk. And we're going to mix it very well. Now we're going to add two tablespoons of oil. Since we're using the canola oil, this will make the flour tortillas more nutritious, and they also be having calcium since we're using the dry milk. And we use some warm water. We're going to mix it to make it a soft dough. Okay, And we're going to start making our balls. Okay, You can knead it a whole lot better if you take it out of your bowl. Okay, And we'll start making our, our balls to start our tortillas. And you can just, it's important that you also have your table cleaned up before you Roll out your tortillas. Okay. And I have already started preheating my grill. You don't want to have it too hot or too cold either. It needs to be warm enough for when you start making your tortillas, they can be getting cooked. Okay. Let's just move some of this excess flour out of the way. And this is one of the things also children can start learning to do is you can let them start rolling out the flour tortillas and it's a good way that you can keep the tradition in your family. Okay, we're going to place our tortilla in the grill. And while that one's starting to blister, we'll start our next tortilla. Okay, we're going to flip it over and let it cook some more. And if you see that it's not hot enough, you can raise the heat a little bit more because it is very important that it's hot enough, okay? We need to pre-cook, preheat our grill. While that's heating up a little bit more, I'm gonna go ahead and start our low-fat sour cream, which is using our cottage cheese. And it's a low-fat cottage cheese, so it'll make this sour cream low fat, okay? We're going to add one cup of low-fat cottage cheese, some low-fat milk, and one teaspoon of lemon juice. And we're going to be blending this to a smooth. Okay, we're going to pour our sauce, and we'll have it ready for our burritos. Okay, we're going to take our tortilla off. We're going to be filling this mother burrito with beans and some cheese, but you can alternate using uh, leftover meats. We're going to fill it in the middle with some beans. 
You can use beans, you can use cheese, uh, you can use any variety of foods you want to put. You can also use chicken, you can use meat with chili. We're going to roll the ends in, roll it up. Okay. And we're going to smother it with red chili. You can either use red chili or green chili. We're going to garnish it a little bit with our low-fat sour cream that we made with our low-fat cottage cheese. We're going to garnish it with a little bit of chopped green onions. And you can garnish it with some lettuce and tomato. And you can also serve it on the side with some Spanish rice. Do you remember some of the things Bertha did to make her homemade flour, tortillas, and burritos a little bit healthier? Well, first off, when she made her tortillas, she did a couple of things. She added some whole wheat flour, and that'll give your tortillas a little more body, as well as fiber, which is something most of us should eat more of. She also added some powdered milk to her tortillas, giving them some calcium, so that's added nutrition that you wouldn't normally find there. And finally, she used less oil and salt than you would find in commercially prepared tortillas. So all around, they're a much healthier and tastier dish. Now, what did she do with the fillings for her burritos? Well, she was using refried beans, and those can often be fried, as you know, in a lot of lard or oil. But Bertha had fried them just ahead of time in a tiny bit of oil over high heat, and mashing them in that oil gives them that refried flavor without adding all those extra calories. So that the beans went into the, into the tortillas, along with some low-fat, very high-in-flavor cheese, so she didn't have to use a lot of it. And then what did she put on top? Well, she made her own low-fat sour cream. Sour cream at the store you can buy in a low-fat or even non-fat version, but the one that Bertha made is even tastier and healthier. So that's something you might want to consider. Making a dish like this from scratch saves you time and money and also tastes really good. I hope you enjoyed our New Mexico Entrees feature of Long Live La Familia. Until next time, long live our families. Proceeding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.